going raw vegan, as you know, has literally changed my life like nothing else. But I've really learned over the years, health is not just about the food we eat. I think it, I, I think I got carried away with that for a while and thought it was like just the foods I ate because it totally transformed my life. But it's also the thoughts we think, the way we feel, everything. There's just so much to it. So we're going to have a great conversation with my dear friend Helia today. She's amazing. She's a manifesting expert, law of attraction expert. She's studied under Bob Proctor. And I love this topic. So you guys have been asking for this. You guys have great questions. So let's get into it. What do you think about all this? I mean, it's not just the food we eat, right? It's the thoughts we think. So how can we keep our thoughts positive when hard times are going on? Even if like we're eating as clean as possible, how do we deal with those mm -hmm. hard times and still stay positive and create the best life? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this podcast. Um, and you're absolutely right. It's not just about the things that we eat or how much exercise we do. It's absolutely about our vibration and how we think and how we feel. And one of the things that I always think about is that's why when you see two people eat the same thing, same food, same kind of um, food, and they get different results. One of them, they gain weight, the other one does not. And it has to do with how you think. And especially when you're eating something, are you thinking that it is a bad thing for you? It's going to you're going to gain weight by eating that or you're absolutely fine you're going to think that your body is going to digest it and you'll be fine so our thoughts are so so powerful that it literally affects everything that we do and we get different results even if we're doing the exact same thing so it's amazing to eat healthy absolutely we have to eat healthy you have to exercise and i love um, eating raw because it looks so natural and so good for the body but if we are having negative mindset, um, anxiety, those things, doesn't matter how healthy you eat, it's going to affect your body. Like your body is going to get sick. You're going to get the anxiety, the depression, the stress. Doesn't matter how healthy you eat, you're going to get disease. As Bob Proctor, my mentor said, this is not being at ease. Mm -hmm. So absolutely right. Wow. So what are some of the keys? Like... If we've got, we know what works for being healthy. Like for me, it's being raw. So what are some of the keys for taking care of like our thoughts and our mental health in other areas? Like how can mm. we stay positive and not sort of spiral into negativity when we feel triggered or when things are happening? Yeah, that's a good question because there's always something happening in life, in everyone's life. No one's life is perfect. We look at social media and we think people's life is perfect. It is not. We're always going through something, either our personal things, relationships, health, career-wise, finances. And so our first um, duty is to keep our mind healthy and our thoughts positive. And how we do that, there are different ways of doing that. But one thing that absolutely helped me a lot when I'm going through something hard is gratitude. And the way people look at gratitude is different. The way it works for me it might be different uh, from the way it works for you, but I give you some examples. So when I first started with Bob Proctor, he taught us how to do the gratitude and the way he teaches is um, through writing it down. So every morning you write down 10 things that you're grateful for, either from the past or present and also for the future. So the things that haven't happened yet, you're grateful for them because you have the faith and belief that they're going to happen. And that's how you manifest things, actually. One of the ways that you manifest things. But the way that gratitude works for me is through um, mirror work and hearing my own voice. So I don't write them down anymore. I say them out loud, sometimes in front of the mirror, sometimes not even in front of the mirror, just as soon as I wake up. I close my eyes and I just say around 10 things that I'm really, really grateful for. And it might be the same things every day, might be different things, might be small things, might be even sometimes it's just my sheet, my bed or whatever that awaken that feeling of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude for being alive, gratitude for my place, my friends, doesn't matter what it is for a cup of coffee you're having. And also just don't forget again, um, gratitude about the things in the future. So that's one of the things that we can always do every morning, at least in the morning and once at night, that would be great too, 
just to keep our mind positive because things happen in life, as you said. And so that's one of the things, but there are so many more things. And, and you want to like tap into how you feel, right? Like you want to say you're being grateful for things that are going to happen in the future. You know, like you're practicing gratitude for things that you want to see transpire in the mm -hmm. future. Like you want to tap into those feelings like you already have it, right? Yes, the feeling, good point. The feeling is really, really important. It's not the acting of gratitude, writing it down or saying it. It's not about the action. It's about the feeling because okay. the way you yeah. feel changes your vibration, changes your state of being. So what if we have a, say we're not happy with the house we live in. Mm -hmm. Say we live in an apartment mm -hmm. that we're not happy with mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to get back to like having a dream house again, mm -hmm. but we have a hard time like mm -hmm. feeling like sometimes as I get older, I feel like I have a hard, harder time tapping into those feelings of it happening mm -hmm. or like those, you know, feelings of excitement for happening. Do you have any tips for that, for like triggering those feelings? Because that's yeah. what really creates our life, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's tricky. It's hard. I have to say, I have to admit, it's, it's <laughs> hard because especially if you are living there, it's right in front of your face every day you wake up and you're there <laughs> yeah. in the same environment, same room. It's not easy. So first we start with that. It's not easy. It's a hard work. How do we do that? We just have to distract ourselves. We just have to completely take, take our focus and attention off that, the environment that we are living in, and focus on something else. Because the key is for us to raise our vibration. If the place we're living in is not helping us to raise our vibration, we have to, as hard as it, it is, we have to focus on changing the subject altogether. Like focus on your career, focus on what you're doing and you're loving it. And don't think about the house thing at all because that's a subject that is triggering and that's your current result. Mm -hmm. And But also remember that your current experience is a result of your past vibration. I love thinking about it this way. Whatever is happening right now in your material world, house, um, finances, relationship, right now is a result of past thoughts and past vibrations. So th it's actually old news. Right now mm. is old news. It's kind of cool to think about it like that. Yeah. I like it's it gone. like that. It's gone. Yeah. Because everything starts with vibration and thought first. Mm -hmm. So first vibration and thoughts that we're going to, cr we create things with our thoughts and vibrations and the way we feel. Um, and and then we get the results. So this result is literally like the manifestation of old uh, programming. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to have the same result a few years, a couple of years from now. You can absolutely have different results. How? You just change your thoughts. You change mm -hmm. your vibration. You change your, as Joe Dispenza says, you change your personality. You literally become someone else. So the life that we are living right now is a result of the person that we have been how can we have a different lifestyle, different house, different environment, different finances? We have to change, like literally become a different person. On the inside, right? On the inside, and it's like the in inside your thoughts. that creates our whole outside yes. world, right? Yes, exactly. So Bob says the outside results are always a reflection of what is going on inside of us, inside meaning in our head. So if we are not happy with the result, the result comes from here. Mm -hmm. It only comes from here, from our mind. So we want to change that. How we change that, it's the whole programming. It's the whole paradigm. It's the whole personality. So we literally become someone else. And there's just the, the process of doing that, of course, that I teach to my clients. But one of the things that we talk about a lot and is important is you literally change your self-image. So we all have an image about ourselves. When you're alone, when I'm alone, um, you're thinking about ourselves, the, not the way that we act and we are with other people. That might be different from how we really feel inside. Yeah, yeah. How we really feel inside, that's our self-image, and that reflects into our results. So our results are a reflection of that self-image. And if we want to change the results, we don't go out there and work hard and hustle. We, we do that after. We first change our self-image, the kind of person we are, how we feel about ourselves, how worthy 
really we feel about ourselves. So what if we had a childhood where we didn't feel loved or like mm. we felt like super unworthy? Like how do we like dig into ourselves and change that inside of us so that we know we're worthy? We know we're like a child of the mm -hmm. most high God. We know we're amazing. And then we can attract that in our outer world, mm -hmm. really, because that is a problem. If we feel really unworthy on the inside, then we'll probably attract those people and circumstances and things like most likely, right? To reflect back to that in our outer world, right? Because like yeah. you said, it's just a mirror. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I've, um, I've studied different things and different teachers and coaches. And one thing that they all agreed on, and the scientists also, is that almost every child have had a trauma in their life yeah. because things that happen to a child that might not be um, traumatic for an adult they're absolutely a trauma for a child mm -hmm. because um, they haven't developed their consciousness yet and they are so fragile and they don't know if they are safe in this world so even the smallest thing can affect them and make them unworthy or doubt themselves and um, so we've all had different things in our childhood that were not necessarily positive or in our advantage mm -hmm. some people had more obviously depending the household some people had less but as an adult we have to take this responsibility so i love what bob teaches he says you are responsible for your life and everything starts from here if we accept that okay whatever happened to me happened and now I can either be a victim of that for the rest of my life and say I didn't have a good parent, I didn't have a good mom or caring father, or we can become responsible and take responsibility for our life and say, okay, I know that things were not good in my childhood, but I'm gonna shift things and I'm gonna create things because I am the creator, right? We are all creators. Yeah. We all create our life. Sometimes we create by default, sometimes we create purposefully and intentionally and that's the best right that's the best way of living and that's the way how we are supposed to live that's the way every human being is supposed to live because if you think about it we have so much power in our mind we are the highest form of creation and we can absolutely create anything out of thin air we can create things look in the history like people who have created things invented things like steve jobs and the phone and the laptop and mm -hmm. the, Absolutely anything that we have in life being created from someone's mind. Yeah, right. It's wild. I think we really need to realize so like crazy. just how powerful we are. Right. That's what it made me realize. And I think we have to realize if we're in a situation that we don't like. And yeah, we I do think we are the creators of our own life. Like you're mm -hmm. saying, I do believe in like these laws of the universe and everything. And I think we have to realize if we've created like a lot of things we don't like in our life, maybe that's not such a bad thing because we can create the opposite. You know yes. what I, you know what I mean? Like we can create our dream life then. Like don't hang up on like because sometimes if there's areas I'm not happy with, it's easier for me to be like, oh no, like I did this, and then mm -hmm. you can kind of feel powerless because mm -hmm. you did this to yourself, kind of. Mm -hmm. You created these things, but I think we need to just take our power back and realize if we did this, we can swing the pendulum the other way Absolutely. and make things even better, right? And that's what Abraham Hicks talks about. This is the contrast, right? Mm -hmm. The contrast of things that happen in your life and you don't like makes you actually realize what is it that you like so maybe up yeah. until that point you were living an okay life but something happens that is just really not to your liking that makes you even want even more stuff and a better lifestyle in whatever it is in which area yeah whatever area it triggers it is. that it like, triggers that so it's like one stick and two ends right this is the unwanted end of the stick makes you think about really the other end of the stick and what is it that i actually really really want and you have to use this contrast to our advantage and as you said just don't hang out to the unwanted thing just move on in our thoughts right mm -hmm. and so we have to use our our mental faculties as bob teaches mm -hmm. which is our one of our mental faculties is our imagination so we see the things like as you mentioned the apartment or whatever it is that we don't like we literally have to learn to shut off our senses our five senses yeah. are not for us to create. Yeah. They are for us to just navigate in life, like not fall, not to, you know, not, not hurt yourself. These are the five senses are to navigate in this world mm -hmm. in the present moment, but not to create the future based on those. Yeah. But that's, that's what people the hard do. Part. That's what 99% <laughs> of people do. That's the hard do. part because you look around, people look, you because look at your bank right account, there. you look at this and this and this, and you're just like, 
no, this seems like my reality, mm -hmm. but you have mm -hmm. to like live outside of that, right? And just again, remember yourself, this is the manifestation of the past person, vibration, thoughts, energy, emotions that I had in the past. This is a representation of the um, past, the, the past, whoever I was, the person that I was. Mm -hmm. And this does not have to continue to the future. Mm -hmm. And I can create at any moment. I just shift my focus and I shut off my five senses. So how do we do that? It's hard, as you said, but there are processes. And how do we do that? We literally just, that's what we do with visualization. So we literally close our eyes and we go into our imagination. And because when we close our eyes, it's easier, of course. So one of the senses is shut off. We try to be somewhere quiet so we don't hear stuff. And we go inside, we go within our mind and we create the life that we want. And we sit there with that imagination until we actually really feel it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Bob says, if you can see it in your mind, you can have it in your hand. Mm -hmm. And just remembering that whatever we have in life, whatever is literally whatever is on this planet, <clears throat> someone has created that first in their mind. So when you're thinking about something, you're creating it. Mm -hmm. The only reason that you think about something, but it doesn't manifest in your physical world is our own limiting beliefs. If we don't believe it's true, if we don't believe it's going to happen, because sometimes what happens is people say, well, I visualize all the time, but this thing never happens. It's not only about visualization again, it's about the belief. So you have to have this faith and That's belief. Like I saw something and it was like, People say, I'll believe it when I see it, but they're like, no, you see it and then you yes. believe, or you believe it and then you see it, you first right? You know, it. you first believe it and then you see it. It's not, you see it and then you believe it, you know? That's the real trick to the universe, I feel like. Yeah, and again, I think this helps a lot when you think about people who have invented stuff. They didn't see it first. Like people who, Wright brothers who, um, uh, created the first plane they didn't see anything like that before mm -hmm. they believed it first mm -hmm. and they saw it in their mind and then they created it mm -hmm. everything if you think about it like the first ever chair or couch that had been made everything created first was created in someone's mind yeah it's pretty so cool. they believed it first yeah and then they had it in the physical world and I think a big part of creating the life you want is knowing what you want, right? That's mm. like super key. I <laughs> That's feel like the first if you're step. confused and you're like, maybe I want this, maybe I want this, <laughs> then, you know, everything is going to reflect back to you maybe in confusion. Yes. So what if some people are confused on something in their life, like the p partner, their romantic partner to choose mm -hmm. from or where to live or things like that? Like, do you think we can ask for signs from the universe or do mm -hmm. you think there's ways to like really get clear and really connect with our intuition and like not our mind and figure out what truly is best for us and best for living our best life and like tune into finding the right path if we feel a little bit confused? Such a good question. And Bob said, order is heaven's first law. And he talks about order in the mind, order in our life, order in our house, in our car. Everything, order is uh, heaven's first law, meaning that's the most important thing. If, if you don't have order in your mind, you're going to attract chaos and man manifest chaos in your life. How do we know what we really want? It's an interesting question because I feel like so many times, unknowingly, we are so affected and bombarded by society and especially social media and what other people are doing mm -hmm. and what their passion is. And we don't even know that, okay, this thing that I think I want might not even be what I actually really want, might be something that everybody else seems to be doing. And maybe I feel the pressure of doing the same thing. So that the first thing is to become really, really clear about what is it that I actually want. Forget about society, forget about what my parents want, my, what my partner wants, what everybody else expects. What is it that makes me happy? Like tune in to that feeling. Does a big house make me happy? Small house and traveling more makes me happy. How, when am I the happiest version of myself? Just literally go back to the, um, to the past and see when you were the happiest, mm -hmm. what kind of lifestyle, what kind of partner. And so that, that's one thing that we have to really become clear. Uh, but then also you mentioned something about the universe and um, asking for signs. 
that's also one of the things that we do as I learned it from Bob in our morning routine. So after we do our gratitude, we sit for five minutes, we quiet our mind and we just ask spirit for guidance. So you literally put a question out there to the universe, whatever is the confusion that you're going through and you, you're looking for an answer, ask the universe and be really demanding of the universe. The mm -hmm. universe is here to help us, mm -hmm. right? Be demanding and ask for guidance, ask, ask your question and during the day, pay attention to signs. Really, really pay attention to signs. This is something I that I've been doing recently. I've done that too. And like, it yeah. happens. You'll be like, so give me a sign of this. Like, I'll yeah. do something random. Yeah. Give me a sign of like an air balloon for this or this. Yeah. And then like, it happens. I'm like, whoa, this is so weird. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And ask, the, you, I, I do play these games with the universe. I ask a question and I say, if I see this thing or this number or this color, or one day I ask for a rainbow, um, and I got a rainbow emoji, <laughs> another actual rainbow, but yeah. it was still a rainbow. No, I I'm it's so into it. I love it. It's so much fun. It's fun. Ask a question from the universe. If this happens, if I see this sign, it means I have to do this or that. And yeah. the universe is literally speaking with us all the time. I was telling my sister the other day, because she doesn't believe that much in these things. And we saw some sign together and she was like, wow, that's insane. We saw 999 and I Googled it and it was so related to what I was going through. Wow. Like crazy. Related. I feel like you're so tuned in, tapped and in, turned I, on. I think the more you believe in it and the more you pay attention, the more you receive. And then my sister was like, yeah, maybe this thing is, is maybe th that happens for me too. And I don't pay attention and that's why I don't see it. And I say, yes, absolutely. It, yeah. The universe doesn't speak to you in English or in another language. It's it speaks in, these, in signs. Yeah, so true. So pay attention. And you know what? I really started to realize that when I started like juicing and raw foods, mm. that was when I really started. And I don't think everybody has to do that to be tuned in, but like, that's what really does it for me. And say so like somebody wants to have like the best health, the best body. I know it's not just the foods like we were saying. It's like the thoughts you're thinking, stuff like that. Like I have a friend, Ted Carr, he's a raw vegan. And at one point he kept like joking around, like grabbing his gut, being like, I'm fat, you know? And, mm -hmm. and then like he said, like he got fat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, I think we have to be really careful words. with the words we use, right? So if we have a body that like, we want to make better. We want to get a better physique in the mm -hmm. gym and with our health. Mm -hmm. Like it's important that we kind of just feel like we already have that body. Right. Mm -hmm. And that we talk to ourselves in a positive way. Right. Yeah. Words are really, really powerful because everything has energy. Like if you look at everything in this world, the jar you're holding, this couch, our body, this table, everything, if you look at it under a very strong microscope, you see that it's moving. Nothing is steady. Everything is vibrating all the time, including our thoughts, our vibration. Our, the whole universe is vibration-based. Mm -hmm. Our words also mm -hmm. are vibration. So very, very powerful. And the energy we're giving out, even we jokingly. We raise our vibes then, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> Don't even say things in a, like a joking way. Like, I, I'm so fat. Oh, I'm so ugly and this and that. Even if it's you're joking, the universe doesn't understand jokes. It no, just delivers. Yeah, my neighbor always does that. I love him. He's so funny. I love him. He's always joking like that. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, good. I'm this, I'm that in like bad ways. And I'm like, don't talk to you. But I'm guilty of it. I got a lot of stuff to work on too. That's we why all we're here are. today. That's why we're talking to you. We all are. I'm still learning. We're always learning. And that's the beauty of this. I feel like life is so beautiful because there's no end to learning and mm -hmm. growing. And we're spiritual beings. And Bob always said spirit is for expansion and fuller expression. So we're always expanding. We're always learning. I'm the same. And Bob was the same for yeah. 80 something years old. He was still learning and growing and but speaking of um, raw food, because we're on your channel, it's so important to also pay attention what we're putting in our body. That's absolutely no question about that. Yeah. We are what we eat. And everything has and vibration. Everything has, That's why exactly. it's so high vibe on the foods where it's like if I was eating McDonald's, it's a lower vibration and it's going to affect me unless yeah. I feel like unless I'm so elevated in my yeah. thoughts that I'm like not feeling negative yeah. around McDonald's maybe. <laughs> and like, I don't know <laughs> if people can reach those levels, but yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, I remember you sometimes you post pictures of an apple or other yeah. kind of like fast foods, like the, the Kirlian photography yeah. that shows the vibe and the vibration around it. So different. And you see like how raw foods are so vibrant, full of energy and on a different frequency and like cooked foods or fast foods or 
so just literally like dead dollar no energy yeah, literally yeah and okay so say somebody eats some cooked food or they eat like a burger or something and they know it's bad so mm -hmm. they feel guilt around that how mm -hmm. can they not beat themselves up if they fall off track like mm -hmm. how can they you know i I literally eat so clean all the time because I feel so good. I eat good to feel good. I have so much energy. But there was one day this year I had a cheat day in Miami. I, mm -hmm. I made a video about it on my channel and I had a cooked meal and I felt like crap. I, I remember. And then I was beating myself up. Why did I do this? Felt Why did I do sick. This? Literally. So like, is there a way around like not going down that road in our head mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. when we yeah. do something that isn't in our best interest? Yeah. Again, like everything else. And I go back to the concepts of Bob Proctor's teaching. It's the contrast thing, right? You do something that feels bad and you learn from it and you focus your attention on what you want to do that feels right for you so don't beat yourself up because there's no point in that it's just the negativity you're gonna attract yeah. more negativity just learn we are always learning and we are always failing in everything that we are doing and this is a part of the process of living as human beings mm -hmm. no one is perfect mm -hmm. so you had a one day cheat day some people have more and we're just learning and growing and failing okay that's fine yeah. I learned my lesson it didn't feel good I'm not gonna do that tomorrow and like talking about growing I was reading something the other day that was saying like if you totally if you okay it was like this study and it was saying if you like swear at your plants and like tell them you hate them and stuff like they die like mm -hmm. literally they say mm -hmm. like the energy mm -hmm. you give to your plants like it dies yeah. so like that just made me think too like we have to be so careful at how we talk to everyone around us that's true. like especially the people that you're living with or something mm -hmm. you know in the environment that we're in and mm -hmm. that they're in like even the environment we're in if we're in an environment where people are like talking to us like that study I saw where the plants are like, mm -hmm. we hate you. Like the plants die. Yeah. Right. Literally. And they say it's good to uh, play music for plants. It makes, it gives them actually mm -hmm. more life. Mm -hmm. So they hear things. They have, they have vibration too. It's all vibration, right? The thoughts, the hateful uh, words has vibration. A nice classic music also has a vibration. Wow. Yeah. It's it like love is our highest frequency. If we can all just tune into like the highest loving frequency, mm -hmm. we can just like literally like, just move mountains well that's the <laughs> ultimate ultimate way of being just love frequency because this whole universe is based on love yeah just um whenever we feel fearful or anxious or sad or any kind of those negative vibrations and thoughts just focus on love and that's why i love pets for example because they gave so much to give so much unconditional love yeah find what you love in your life and focus on that see how much your energy rises like instantly yeah it's so true it's so true because even like the other day i was feeling kind of down about some things and then i just started working on my channel mm -hmm. and then i noticed like i felt drastically because better within like that. a short period of time yeah so now that's what i do if something's going on like i go work out because i know it's gonna like yeah. lift my vibe work on my channel yeah or spend some time with my daughters or mm -hmm. like do things that you love I love yeah and helping people that's something that makes me feel good yeah sometimes I, I'm not at my best and I teach and I instantly like within five minutes I feel so good because mm -hmm. I love like helping and spreading this these teachings yeah, yeah. There, I know there, I saw something else this morning I forget what it was I think it was on that London Real channel or something he did mm -hmm. a short and he was like if you want to be remembered in this world like think of what you can give and it's so true, you mm -hmm. know, it's all like it's what you can give. Well, let, I'd love to ask you some questions. Sure. Givers yeah. gain, as Bob says. Yeah. Givers gain. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, my viewers have the best questions. So somebody said, how does one get into the desired state of receivership when their life conditions aren't the best? For example, you want to feel abundant, but you look around yourself and you feel ungrateful, despite the fact that you're lucky to be alive. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same That's similar, kind of what we similar talked thing about. that we talked about so yeah. again just just a reminder um it's not an easy thing to do because just because we have not been taught to do that and we are not used to do that and we don't know how to do that mm -hmm. but as soon as you learn it and you practice it it makes it it becomes easier we have to learn to shut off our five senses here smell see taste touch mm -hmm. we literally have to learn to shut off our fi five senses go inside use our higher faculties that i teach to some of them are like imagination and visualization and the will with the willpower keep that image 
alive on the screen of your mind. So it's important to feed your mind with what you want, because as soon as you don't and you give it empty space, it's going to look for what's going on that is not going right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. right? So that if you are living in an environment or a situation that you don't like, you have to keep your mind busy with what you want and just feel it and go inside and visualize it and just practice shutting off your five senses don't get affected that's a good that's good well yeah. said amazing yeah. and somebody said when you experience something that brings up contrast in your mind and your mind runs away with it then it keeps popping up um what's your best way of pivoting to a more positive direction i've been trying to just jump to another subject but my mind sometimes bring it brings it back again to the contrast hmm yeah so the jumping into another subject is really good if you keep your mind keeps going back to the same subject maybe practice writing things down writing helps a lot so write down what is it that you don't like mm -hmm. and write down what is it that you want so the opposite like the contrast mm -hmm. and just the act of writing is just an energy release mm -hmm. when you're writing it okay, this is the things that I don't like and these are bothering me. And there is a practice we do, we learned it from Bob Proctor, either shred that piece of paper or, paper or burn it somewhere safe, obviously. And this is a release of energy, of the negativity and the contrast and things that you don't want. That, I think, helps a lot. And also, yeah, completely distracting yourself with another subject. Don't think about that subject altogether. Mm -hmm. It's, again, it's just a practice. You have to be aware of that and practice it every day, day and night. Yeah, I think, and, like, I've been dealing with something, like, that's been really popping up a lot the last few years. And I've really noticed lately when my thoughts start going there and it's, I start going down that road, like, just literally putting in my headphones, listening to music I love, mm -hmm. like, it really just, like, switches things. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important just to become conscious when mm -hmm. those thoughts start taking off, like, you're, like, you know, and find what works for you for, like, shifting that, right? Yeah, and music is so powerful, too. It really is. Yeah. Like, I love it. Shout yeah, out Drake. It raises your <laughs> Did you see that Bobby and Drake interview or no? Not yet. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's been taken off. I don't know what's going on. That's some tea for a different channel. But the next <laughs> question is, okay, the next one is a, a quote. Break the energetic bonds that holds you to the past and into a wave of possibility. Dr. Joe Dispenza. That's nice. And the next question is, I'd like to ask whether there are any limitations to manifestation. I think that's what we all need to get over. We've mm. all been like fed these limitations in life. And that's like our biggest problem as human mm. beings. Mm -hmm. For example, whether we can have some bad karma from past lives that we have to go through in this life, no matter how much we manifest something different. Do you believe in that? But I don't know if I believe in that. But do you Listen, think that's actually this true? Is, this is something bad that karma is, from past lives? is not, even if it's true, even if it's true, it's not proven and it cannot be proven. So why do we even focus on that? I know. Why I've never heard of that on, being proven. Yeah. Yeah. This is something it's like a theory might be true, might not be true, but if it is not within your control and there's something that can affect you negatively, why would you even think about that? <laughs> True. Don't even think about it. You yeah. can't change it, right? <laughs> yeah. So don't bother thinking about that. Focus on what you want. There is no limitation in manifesting anything. You can manifest anything that you want because, again, we are the, the it's, we are soul. We mm -hmm. are the highest form of creation. There is no limitation except the limitation that we put in our mind and limitations that come from our paradigm, from our upbringing, from our childhood. And the people around us. We have to be careful who's around, around us. Absolutely. You yeah. become like the five people that who you hang out with the most. I believe that. Yeah. Well, it's good. A lot of the five people I hang out with now are making 100000 a month and they're living their best lives. That's awesome. Literally, like my whole circle's really changed. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's and really I, good. It's important. Yeah. yeah, and it's not all money. I mean, like other, like satisfied with relationships, this, this, Money this. is part of it, you know. It's just another, it's a way of living. It's not that money is good or bad. It's just a tool, right? So many people get hung up. I think it's It's great. a tool yeah. and it, it matters like what, whoever you are and whatever kind of person you are, money just amplifies that. Yeah. Like if you're a bad person, you're just going to do more bad stuff with the money that you have. Yeah. And if you're a good person, you're going to do more good. Yeah. Um, but about that question, don't worry about bad karma and 
be, we, we don't know and we don't want to focus on things that we don't know and we cannot change. True. Good point. Okay. And someone said, could they give any insight into Bob Proctor's thoughts and your own thoughts on the law of assumption as it compares with the law of attraction? I've, okay. I've been mm. watching Elmer Locker Owen Jr. His mm-hmm. channel is amazing too. I'll link it below and I'll link your channel below mm-hmm. and everything you have. Mm-hmm. It's I love your channel. Thank and you. There's a lot about the law of assumption. I love that. I love law of assumption. I first learned it from um, the book, The Power of Awareness from Neville Goddard. Um, I think he was the first person who talked about that many, many years ago. I don't even know what year it was, 1930 or something. And so there are different laws in the universe, right? Law of attraction, law of vibration, law of polarity, so many different laws. And we're just learning about all these things. Um, Law of assumption, it literally said, so the question was, what is the difference between law of attraction and law? Yeah, like the insight of Bob Proctor's thoughts on comparing those two and your thoughts. So law of attraction is actually not the primary law. It's a secondary law. Wow. law the, se- the primary law is law of vibration, right? There are different levels of vibration. As I said, everything vibrates. This whole universe is in, in motion, is in motion. And there are different levels of frequencies, like unlimited levels of frequencies. So that's the law of vibration. And then law of attraction says that we attract based on our vibration. Mm -hmm. So whatever frequency you are on, you're attracting things that are on that level of frequency. But law of assumption, it says you manifest whatever you assume to be, whatever you believe, whatever you absolutely have faith in. And if you look at like in your life, go look at your life, your past experience, or even the things that you have, I always think about that these things that I have and they came probably easy and not too hard because at some point I, I just literally assumed that this is going to happen for me and that was not a big deal. I I assumed it would be this way and it was this way. I assumed that this is my career. I'm going to do this and this is actually what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So, and it has to do a lot with faith. So we are developing our faith and the things that we want, we are using the law of assumption to our advantage and just assuming that this will happen for me. Mm-hmm. That's a lo- that's a universal law. If, and if you believe in it, just n- have the knowing, not wishing, the knowing that this is absolutely going to happen for me, it will happen. Isn't it crazy though that like these thoughts and feelings literally create our worlds? Like it's so cool. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. And you know what law I used to love hearing about? Was the uh, the vacuum law or whatever it's called? The Have vacuum you, law. Do you know that law? Yeah. Did Bob talk yeah. about that? Yeah, that so that's is like, so good. That is that really true? I know. Like they it's say, so like true. if you want more clothes, like yeah. empty out your closet, have hangers, make room for the clothes. If you I've want a partner, that. make room in the bed for the partner. Yes. If you want a new car, get rid of your car and leave your parking spot open to make room for the new car. Have you done that? I've done that so many times, at least for my closet, not for the partner. Well, my daughter, she cleaned out her closet the other day, and it's yeah. like all empty, and there's like room for like all these new clothes I was like there's the vacuum law you're getting yeah, ready for new clothes right <laughs> like I think it's true do you it's absolutely true I've tried it so many times in life and it's the energetic exchange right you're giving something out and making space and the universe just want to fill it up it's all energy just try it with your closet if you don't believe it guys yeah <laughs> it's it works <laughs> yeah it absolutely. works absolutely the, the things that you're not wearing you're not using just donate them and give them to people who need them and yeah. you'll have a new better clothes yeah that's what i do and somebody said how do you match the vibration of what you want if you don't know what it feels like to have it why is it important to put yourself in a happy state before asking for what you want feeling happy can't be the vibrational match to everything you're asking for Hmm. I'm sure the vibrations vary. So why do we why do we want things that we want? Yeah. To make a, make to us feel good. Feel better, to feel, feel good. Be- everything, everything that you want in life is material for a feeling. things. Even it's when for you our feelings wanna, that we need to feel that feeling. feeling now and then yeah. it just takes place around us. Anything, not only material things, everything that you want to do or even if you want to even say something as superficial as like I want to be like famous and have a lot of followers. Why do you want to be famous? Mm -hmm. because it feels good when Mm -hmm. people pay attention and people Mm -hmm. know you people follow you it just feels good Mm -hmm. everything we want a partner we want the house we want the vacations we want um freedom we want 
it's because it makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. So the feeling good, you want to call it feeling good, you want to call it happiness, whatever you want to call it, but it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we want in this world is because it makes us feel good. And that's, yeah, that's important to feel good. It's mm -hmm. important to feel happy because that's the ultimate thing. And I feel like that's when we should make decisions. And that's when our thoughts are more powerful. When we're feeling good, we're in a good vibe. Like we're at the gym or we're doing things that make us feel mm -hmm. good. Then those thoughts that come to us or like those ideas are probably more in line with what's best for us. Right. Then, mm -hmm. then the thoughts we think when we're feeling like really low, like, don't you think maybe yeah. don't take action and do things when we're feeling really bad? Don't take actions when you're feeling bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I asked that my coach, um, a while ago and, I was not in a good place and I was still working and doing my stuff. And he said, stop, <laughs> don't do anything. Your vibration is not good right now. You're just going to attract negative things and or no result at all. Mm -hmm. So don't even bother. Go fix yourself. Do go to the gym, eat healthy, do whatever you have to do to raise your vibration just a little bit, maybe. And then take action. Never, yeah. never take action when you are too negative. But also this should not be an excuse for us to stay in bed all day every day because no. we don't feel good yeah we want to try to make us to to feel good whatever it takes like going to the gym i feel like it helps a lot because of the serotonin right it helps it helps me your so mental much health. too yeah and somebody said what books do you recommend and how to get started oh gosh there's so many books but the first and the most important book of um um, Napoleon Hill book, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. This is the book that Bob Proctor studied and read for 60 something years every day. Every day he just opened the, the book, just read a chapter or a paragraph. So, so powerful. And it's not a book that you read once. Think and Grow Rich is a book to be studied over and over again. So that is a must in your um, library, in your uh, bookshelves. And the other one is U Squared. Mm -hmm. U Squared by... Price Pritchett. It's a tiny book and it talks about quantum leaps. Wow. And so, so powerful. Um, one more that is very, very powerful, and this book is also to be studied, is Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. It's about self image. Hmm. And remember, we were just talking about the personality, how you should change your self image to have different results. This book helps a lot. And it has like practices and homeworks that you have to go through to change your self-image that's amazing so those are good books for getting those started are really good books like to them. get started and also just um study bob proctor i would say because bob proctor the, the thing i love about him if your audience don't know him is that he talks about spirituality and also he talks about um like practical steps mm -hmm. it's not just spirituality or you know woo woo it's a really like tactical practical steps you can take to change your life and manifest things you want mm -hmm. okay and somebody's asking if holding on to negative thoughts from someone who hurt you can affect the outcome forgiveness is not always possible they said yeah it's it's not always easy but it's always possible yeah eventually it becomes possible when you value yourself more than the other person yeah when you tell yourself that i am worthy of living a peaceful happy life and i'm not gonna let other the other person to take control of my feelings because what you're literally doing if you're not forgiving them and you're angry at them they are taking control of your life even when they are not with you anymore, they're taking control of your life and your feelings and whatever you are manifesting in the future. You don't want to give them that power. No. You want to take the power back. Forget about them. Yeah. This, in this universe, you get, what, you get in what you put out. So if someone did something wrong to you, believe me, they're going to get something karma. Believe in karma. I mm -hmm. believe in karma. Do you believe in karma? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. So just leave them up to the universe. I think that's why there's karma. If we didn't believe in karma, then maybe there wouldn't be because we believe in it. Yeah. Right? True. Know. <laughs> and um, okay, so what else do we have here? I think it all changes mentally first. Whether you want to stop smoking, create wealth, attract a partner, or become healthy, it has to begin in your mind, and then the real shift happens. I agree with that. Yeah. And somebody said, I am curious as to whether you incorporate universal and natural laws into manifestation. If so, does not eating meat align with their practice of universal and natural laws in order to manifest in this realm? Thank you. I love your channel. Thank you. Hmm. I love you guys. I have the best viewers in the whole world. <laughs> They're all so nice and positive. You, you have very and good just followers. so amazing. Yeah. You have a very good channel and good followers. Thanks. And eating meat 
I don't know. I can't. I can't comment on that really yeah. because I am not raw vegan. I I I feel like I eat raw maybe seventy percent of the time. Yeah, but I still eat meat. But is it wrong to kill animals? Is it right? I don't know. I don't even go there. Yeah. You Sometimes know what? Sometimes I wish God would just come down and give us a PDF of know, everything right? exactly is, that we should be doing. What is right? What is easier, wrong? And, I know. Sometimes <laughs> I just really want to connect more and get like just all the solid answers. Just do what feels good for you. Yeah. I would say that. If if eating meat is not making you feel good, don't eat it. If it, if it's okay and you feel good about it, eat it. And everything in moderation, of course. Yeah. But just see how you feel and what feels good and do that. Follow that. Follow your yeah. own truth. Everybody has yeah. to do what's right for them. Yeah. And what's the most powerful manifesta- manifestation technique for fast results? Hmm. Fast results. Um, I think the, the, the most powerful technique, if we call it technique or not, and the hardest probably, is to develop your faith. Just faith in the unknown, Right. Mm-hmm. Even if you're going through things that are really, really horrible, you have to develop that unwavering faith and belief in the unknown that something amazing is going to happen if I keep this right. If I do these practices that I learned from these videos, if I do my morning routines and gratitude, I have this faith that absolutely things that I want are going to manifest and my life is going to change. The only way you see things manifesting fast if, is when you have absolute 100% faith in that. Yeah. Um, same as the Makes law sense. of assumption. So yeah. law of assumption is really, really powerful in manifesting things fast. Mm. You just assume that it's going to happen because you believe in it 100%. No yeah. doubt. Mm-hmm. Right? Makes sense. You have to get rid of doubts. It all makes sense. I'm glad we have this knowledge, you know? It's yeah. great. We have YouTube now where we can all learn it's more about amazing. this. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, somebody said, I've tried affirmations, I've tried mirror work, I've tried meditation, but I have had bad luck and negativity in my life for the past 10 years. Uh Uh-oh. My question is, how do I manifest something positive when I'm surrounded by all this negativity? How do you unlearn everything you've learned as a child? Mm. That's a good question. And then sometimes if we're experiencing a lot of things we don't like in a negative life, then you can, and and you're aware of all these laws and things, then you can beat yourself up even more. And it can be worse. You can be like, I created all this, and then you can have all the shame and and be scared of creating worse yeah so how can we snap out of this especially after 10 years i'm sorry you've been experiencing 10 years of that you know what i always think the pendulum swims swings the other way mm-hmm. and if it's been really bad like that for 10 years then you know what things are about to go and you're get, right like, extremely absolutely good right. like who knows what you're in for absolutely right like yeah. there is like remember abraham hicks talks about the vortex mm-hmm. so this person has put so much in their vortex already yeah so much goodness because of the everything that they went through for 10 years, but it's the law of attraction too. So when we are in that negative momentum, we're just attracting more and more negativity, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. right? It's the vibration and, and more negativity attracting to our life. And how do we switch that? Obviously we cannot switch it all of a sudden right away. We cannot, we have to just accept that. Mm -hmm. It's one day at a time, one step at a time, slowly, slowly. And, Doing all these things that we talked about, I know she she or he, they said they do all these things, but sometimes, actually most of the time, it's not about the things that we do consciously, it's about the subconscious mind. So if the subconscious and the programming and the paradigm is on the negative side, we have to fix that. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter how much uh, consciously you're going to say gratitude. There is something called paradigm. Bob Mm -hmm. Proctor talks about it a lot. It's the multitude of habits and beliefs that we all have it from our childhood, our upbringing, our parent figures. So if the part, we have to work on the paradigm and change the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a process. So there are two ways to change the subconscious. One is through an emotional impact, which is usually, unfortunately, a negative impact, like losing someone that we love, a death in a family or, or um, financial hardships or something really, really dramatic that shifts our paradigm or through repetition and coaching 
and what learning. What you're saying, like those bad times can shift, can shift our subconscious for the better. Is that what you mean? Yeah, because so sometimes you go, sometimes you go through something dramatic, like an event that really shakes you, and you're like, okay, I'm done with whatever oh, I've yeah. been going through. This is it. I'm not going to do that anymore. And your subconscious really shifts and changes to that's something true. like opposite. Because that's like, I just interviewed Shane Sterling. I don't know if you know him. He's Rodney yeah. again. And he's like, does, he coaches people and he takes mm-hmm. a lot of coaching and he's really inspiring. And he said his life really changed when he decided he was going to take responsibility and not be a victim anymore because he just reached a point where things got so bad. And then yes. he was like, enough. Yes. I'm not going to blame the government anymore. I'm not going to blame my ex. I'm not going to blame this and this. Yeah. Like, it's my life, my responsibility. And then things changed. Yeah. So maybe so, yeah. hopefully it's the same situation for this person. Wow, things can yeah. shift, shift dramatically even through like a dramatic experience or studying and learning and coaching and just being in the environment mm-hmm. of these things that we just talked about yeah okay and somebody said i love your channel but i can't deal with all of the new age <laughs> and they said praying for you so what do you think about that i think this is actually the old age this stuff. is that's exactly what i wanted to say this is not new age we're yeah. just literally just talking about it more and more these days i feel because of the social media but if you look at the things that the people that i mentioned the books neville goddard and napoleon hill they're like years ago and yeah. it's there's nothing new about it and these are scientific scientifically proven like yeah. this is science that everything vibrates there are different levels of frequencies in this world yeah and there's a quantum physics now people are studying and learning more so there are quantum leaps these are all science mm-hmm. it's, it's nothing new it's it comes from an old understanding but actually right now more and more scientists are proving these things scientifically which i love yeah like there's so many podcasts it. talking about it in a scientific way so people can really understand yeah. what exactly. this all manifestation is it about is vibration and again with the foods guys like literally nothing makes me feel better than the it literally lifts my vibes and attracts a better life like mm-hmm. the green juices the watermelon the apples like that's a huge, huge thing for me. And that's what's totally transformed my life. Amazing. Like, I don't even know where I'd be if I was still yeah. eating like I used to eat. And somebody said, I've studied Abraham Hicks for years. Who we, I love Abraham Hicks. I it's just her. like another level, I right? I can go on and on watching her YouTube videos forever. No, it's, and they're all like the little cartoon videos. Huh? I love Do you those notice too. Yeah. yeah. I barely see any that are like her actually talking. They are all the cartoon Most videos. Them, yes. I feel like who's, and they're all these different channels. It's like, yeah. who's making these cartoons? But I'm here. So amazing it people. works yeah somebody said they um okay so they say you need to visualize for 17 seconds i've heard this over and over too in order to get the life you want so you need to visualize for 17 seconds and really feel that you have what you want or feel the feelings like you have already manifested whatever you want is that true i have a hard time visualizing yeah i do too lately mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know what mm-hmm. it is what what do you mean you have a hard time visualizing like, like you- uh, maybe because i have two kids and it's like always like chaos okay. and we're in the small apartment but sometimes at the end of the day when mm-hmm. i'm laying in bed i have a hard time like sitting visualizing like my next things i, wa- I want to mm-hmm. the next life i want to create for myself mm-hmm. like you know the next steps for this avatar yeah so i had clients before they said i cannot visualize at all and so the, <laughs> the process that i take them sometimes and and i keep saying you can absolutely and they're no i cannot visualize i close my eyes and i don't see anything it's just darkness <laughs> like okay go back to a memory of the past and do you see something from your past like, like that yeah what did you have for lunch or like you that. know or back, some like amazing time or you, yeah when you were happy or you were having a good experience and start from there because then you're seeing images and then from there you can pivot to the future images that mm-hmm. you want and yeah. visualize and if you cannot do like detailed visualization that's something that people get hung up on don't worry about that don't worry about that. Some people are good with details and visualizing in like details and colors and motion. Some people are not. The most important thing is the feeling. Mm-hmm. So you want to feel it. You want to believe it. You want to believe in your power and know that there is a higher consciousness helping you and co-creating with you. So whatever you want, if you believe in it, even if you visualize it a little bit, a few seconds here and there, but you have this faith, again, the most important thing is the faith, then it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about like being to visualizing to okay. into details or. I like that and I think we really need to let go of like hate and anger towards people or mm. situations in our life too right like mm-hmm. remove those blocks of negativity to like let in the good yeah so one of the things that is really really important and I feel like not a lot of manifestation coach 
coaches talk about is that it's not much about what do we do to manifest. It's more about what do we not to do to allow this energy to flow. You know, what is the blockages? Mm -hmm. What are we doing that is blocking our manifestation? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's not I feel like people don't talk about that enough. Instead of talking and focusing about the manifestation techniques, we have to first talk about what am I doing that is blocking this flow of energy? Yeah. Anger, as you said, hate, frustration, sadness, all these negative feelings. We have to remove those feelings first. That's mm -hmm. our first job. Mm -hmm. Then we will open our channels, our chakras, and we let the energy flow. There's always, there's an energy flowing to and through us, as Bob said. Always. You can call it thought energy. Because when you think about it, something, where does that thought come from? Mm -hmm. It comes from the universe, right? And we all have this power to choose our thoughts. Mm -hmm. This is our responsibility. Like this is how... a computer, you know? Yeah. You are responsible for this computer. It, no one else is responsible for your thoughts. No one else can make you think a thought that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So much power in that. Mm -hmm. You can... Wow think a thought that you want and absolutely change your life from there. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. And the, okay. So the same person said, can you also, can you be really healthy if you're thinking the right way, but not eating the right way? In other words, you're eating a lot of junk food, but you're very joyful and happy and full of love. Can you maintain health? <laughs> do you think? I believe some people can. I think some people I can believe. too. It's not me. <laughs> it's because I believe that because the belief is, yeah, is true. very, very like, powerful. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's the belief. Not it's a good thing belief. to do, but if yeah. it works for you and you're healthy and yeah, I know people like that. They're super healthy and fit and they don't eat healthy. But yeah, I that's know not for like me that either. Too. I just enjoy eating healthy. It feels good for me. Me too. And right? if and I, I, I eat people. unhealthy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, well, this has been amazing. I've loved, I always love Thank having you. you on. I think you're so amazing. I'll link so everything much. down below for you too. Everybody go follow Helia and she puts on amazing events. She does amazing, amazing coaching. Thank you. And if there's anything you want to end off with that you feel like around this topic, you feel inspired mm -hmm. or anything that you feel like you want to share with the audience, then absolutely do so. Or if you feel like that's it, then let everybody know where they can find you as well. Just wanted to share one more thing very quickly because with all the difficulties happening in the world right now, mm -hmm. in, we are in Canada, North America, like everything like financially or in people's personal life, people are going through a um, lot of difficulties these days. So just surround yourself with um, like-minded, heart-minded people. Be on these channels, follow these kind of people and just bombard your mind with positivity that's how you can save yourself and mm -hmm. we all need that we all need to be in communities and in connection with people who are in the same wavelength and who understand the same concepts and same same language and i'm i have something coming up i'm doing this thing for free for people who just want to get to know me more and learn about these concepts more it's a five days live event um but the last week of september i will send you the yeah, link maybe the link. Okay. people are more than welcome to join it's a free event and yeah. it's called accelerate your money manifestation amazing so we're going to talk about how that. we make more money that's yes. a great topic <laughs> yeah well again this has been amazing Thank i love you, you. So you are so amazing me. and helia is a dear friend of mine you guys we met when we when i used to do real estate full-time we met we were on the same team years and years ago yes. and it was just meant to be yes. and now we have an amazing now we're friendship following our passions and you're so inspiring and you're so uplifting thank you so and you. i have been, had some hard times recently too and helia has really been there which has been great and you've just been so uplifting you're just an amazing friend Thank so beautiful you. inside and out thank you, you. thank, thank you. you so much for having me yeah thank you for coming Thanks. on i love you i could talk to you all day so no, we'll have to have you back in the future let me know if you guys enjoyed this talk and what you want to see more of what questions you have about this topic because we do read the comments and i love you guys so much be sure to subscribe if you don't already and give this video a big thumbs up sorry to tell you guys so much to do do this do this do this <laughs> but i love you guys see you in the next one bye bye